The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. The account of demons asking Jesus to go into a herd of pigs is found in the New Testament of the Bible, specifically in the Gospel of Matthew 8 verse 28 to 34, Mark 5 verse 1 to 20, and Luke 8 verse 26 to 39. In these passages, Jesus encounters a man possessed by a legion of demons. After Jesus commands them to come out, they beg him to allow them to enter a nearby herd of pigs. Matthew 8 verse 28 to 34 And when he was come to the other side into the country of the Gergzenis, there met him two possessed with devils, coming out of the tombs exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? And there was a good way off from them, and heard of many swine feeding. So the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. And he said unto them, Go. And when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine. And behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea, and perished in the waters. And they that kept them fled, and went their ways into the city, and told everything, and what was befallen to the possessed of the devils. And behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they besought him that he would depart out of their coasts. There are a number of theological interpretations and speculations as to why the demons asked to go into the pigs. We will review several of them today. Theory 1. They wanted to avoid the abyss. Firstly, let's set up the stage. Jesus, in his earthly ministry, encounters a man tormented by a legion of demons. Upon recognizing Christ's divine authority, the demons tremble, pleading not to be cast into the abyss. This leads us to our first point of reflection, the abyss. The abyss, in biblical terms, is depicted as a place of confinement, torment, and ultimate destruction for demonic entities. And when the demons begged Jesus not to be sent there, it signaled their fear of this terrible place and their recognition of Jesus' absolute authority to consign them to this fate. The abyss is depicted as a realm of profound darkness and despair, a place that is clearly dreaded by demonic entities. From what we can infer from scripture, the abyss serves as a prison place of confinement for evil spirits, illustrating the ultimate destination of all malevolent entities. In the book of Revelation, on three separate chapters, we see the abyss, also known as the bottomless pit, as being the abode of evil spirits, or prison for evil spirits. Confronted by Christ's divine authority, the demons pleaded not to be banished to the abyss, revealing their fear and aversion to this dreaded place. Their reaction is telling. It underscores the severe nature of the abyss as a place of torment and isolation, and Jesus Christ's authority. This event shows us that even among the forces of evil there is a profound awareness of the supreme power and dominion of Christ. It's a powerful testament to the unchallenged authority of Jesus. Even in the face of the darkest entities, the Bible states, Philippians 2 verse 9 to 11, Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We live in a world that attempts to deny and disregard the rulership and the lordship 
and kingship of the Lord Jesus Christ. However, the Bible tells us clearly that every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. One way or another, you will bow to him. It is either you will bow to him in this life, or you will bow to him in the realm of eternity. Demons fear him, demons know him. The truth is, demons have an understanding of the Lord Jesus Christ. We as humans do not have. He is the Pantocrator. Glory be to his holy name. Pantocrator is a Greek word that translates to almighty, all-powerful God. In Christian iconography and theology, it is a specific depiction of Jesus Christ, showcasing him as the all-powerful ruler of the universe. Theory number two, it is plausible to suggest that these demons were reluctant to depart from a region where they had been successful in their malevolent pursuits, wreaking havoc among the local population. Their destructive actions had led to significant turmoil. This was a place where they had established their dominion and influence, and leaving it would potentially mean forfeiting their hold over the people. However, the demons' plea to enter the pigs suggests more than just a desire to maintain their local influence. It reveals a deeper truth about the nature of such entities. Demons, as spiritual beings, yearn for a physical form to exert a more physical influence on the material world. Physical existence allows these entities to interact with the world in a more direct, tangible manner. They may seek to manipulate, deceive, and induce harm more effectively when anchored to the physical realm. By asking to inhabit the pigs, the demons were, in essence, attempting to continue their existence in the physical realm, presumably to extend their capacity for causing harm and chaos. In a broader context, this event highlights the continuous spiritual conflict between good and evil that plays out in our world. The tactics employed by the forces of evil, fear, deception and destruction, stand in stark contrast to the message of love, truth and healing embodied in the life and teachings of Jesus. In granting the demons request, Jesus was not condoning their action. Instead, he was demonstrating his ultimate authority and control over both the spiritual and physical realms. It's the truth about the supreme authority of our Lord Jesus Christ, his dominion over all creation, his power over life and death, and his unchallenged rule over the spiritual realm. We see in the Gospels, in Matthew 8, verse 23 to 27, Mark 4, verse 35 to 41, and Luke 8, verse 22 to 25, how Jesus calms the raging storm with his word. And the terrified disciples thought they were at the mercy of the tempest. Jesus stood up and commanded the storm to be still. And immediately there was a great calm. This powerful miracle serves as a reminder that even the winds and the waves obey him. His authority over nature is absolute, reflecting his divine entity as creator and sustainer of all things. But his authority doesn't end with nature. Jesus also holds the power over life and death, the two most profound realities of human existence. We see this in the way he healed the sick, raised the dead, and ultimately, through his own death and resurrection. In John 11 verse 25, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. This statement underlines the unique authority of Jesus to grant eternal life to those who put their trust in him, highlighting his power to conquer death itself. His power over storms show his dominion over creation. His power over life and death affirms his identity as the author of life. And his authority over demons confirms his supremacy over the spiritual realm. These truths are profoundly comforting. For in recognizing Jesus, his authority, we can rest in his ability to calm our personal storms, to give us eternal life, and to protect us from the forces of evil. 
As we navigate through life's challenges, may we draw strength and courage from the knowledge of Christ's supreme authority. In times of fear and uncertainty, let's remember the calm he brought to the stormy sea, his dominion over life and death, and his power over the forces of darkness. In doing so, we can trust that he is with us, guiding us, protecting us, and ultimately offering us the promise of eternal life. Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved? if you're not willing to repent. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.